have endured Yasik's, what, two or three sessions uh, of this, this mind-boggling uh, SMD, surface-mounted devices, we're going to actually see it work so that you actually know what he put together is going to function. It's a little difficult when you watch him work with the little, little vacuums to pick up these pieces or the little tweezers and pick them up and try to uh, solder them in place. Uh, very exciting. Uh, one thing I did learn, though, and I learned it very well, I'm not going to make anything with a surface mounted Another device. Session, uh, about SMD devices, uh, fourth in a row. This time I'm going to show you how the device that I built during the previous presentation actually works. I got it to work and I, I will show you. Uh, but first, let me tell you what actually went wrong. Uh, so, after I removed the board and installed it second time on the preheater, I actually uh, didn't install it correctly and one of the mounting posts uh, moved the components, that's why they were uh, displaced. Uh, so these were uh, three current limiting resistors, one uh, capacitor, not, 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 not very big problem. Uh, I did the entire rework, soldering uh, leads, everything, it took me about 15 minutes. So you see that it was not very big and actually I changed the entire process. Uh, where is the mount? So this is slightly sped up. So right now I'm removing the components, you can see the crooked. Uh, now I'm cleaning the old solder. Again, applying new solder. Uh, placing components. And now time for rework. So you will see how this component size is stuck in the place. It's done. They're soldered. So as I told you several times, it has to be clean. And this board really needed cleaning. <laughs> uh, I actually spilled a lot of uh, flux. There was a lot of resin on the board. I had to clean it. Uh, I just use this is plastic cut from yogurts with cereals. So uh, nothing special. Uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, properly, you should use anti static brush. I'm just using toothbrush. That's it. So I went, I went to, uh, to rinse it under water to wash uh, off the uh, dirty alcohol. Now I rinsed it again with uh, clean alcohol to absorb the water. And it's pretty much done. Now I'm soldering the leads. That's it. So as I told you, this is sped up a little bit, but everything took 15 minutes without rushing too much. You can see it's very simple. Except, of course, the video looks rushed. Well, okay, you're moving real fast. <laughs> <laughs> See what practice does. <laughs> okay, so one thing that I wanted to show during the previous presentation, uh, I started to do it, but I didn't have time to uh, show what are the consequences, is uh, applying too much solder to the parts. I mentioned about it during uh, the uh, uh, second part during the second presentation during the general meeting that you should be very careful how much solder you put and this this is one of the problems that I have with this method that is very difficult to control how much solder you apply <coughs> so I did this on this is inductor uh, this is the output path this actually inductor couples to the output and provides power to the amplifier this is the amplifier and you can actually, the, these are inductors. It's impossible to see without a, a magnification. Almost impossible. Uh, you can see that it is slightly crooked. Now you see how bad it is. It's, pre it's pretty much horizontal. So you have to be very careful how much solder you apply to the parts. Too little is, is bad because then you will not have uh, contact. Too much is also bad because you will have something like this. 
Uh, so what am I gonna do? <coughs> uh, first of all, I want to show you that uh, it actually works. Second, I want to show you how to do some simple measurements. And these measurements can be done with uh, tools with the, which are accessible to pretty much everybody. Maybe they are not the cheapest, but they are definitely uh, affordable. Uh, I, it's possible to do much more measurements, but today I will just show one. So what, what is actually this device on the board? Uh, it's an MMIC monolithic microwave integrated circuit made by Skyworks and this is broadband, broadband amplifier spec from 0.1 to 6 gigahertz. Turns out that it works uh, very well uh, even pretty much from zero. Uh, typical gain, small signal gain is 20 dB uh, intercept point blah blah blah. Uh, one thing that <coughs> I don't like about this amplifier is high, high noise figure, about 4 or 5 dB, but I'm going to use it as output amplifier for my SDR, so this doesn't matter that much. If you would like to use it as an input amplifier, well, then that's a, that's a different story. <coughs> so how do you measure uh, how the amplifier works? Uh, First of all, I want to see how it works on HF bands. Uh, so the simplest method, take a generator, connect the amplifier, take uh, high frequency voltage uh, voltmeter, and measure how, what is the output from the generator, ge measure what is the output from the amplifier divided, you have uh, amplification. Uh, what are the disadvantages of, uh, disadvantages of this method? Uh, you only measure at one frequency. Uh, if you want to measure at many frequencies, you have to go from one point to another, take the measurements, grab them. Another problem with just the simple measuring is that out of band noise may affect uh, the, uh, the result. So if you have very broad, uh, <coughs> uh, very broad uh, measuring frequency range, so you have broadband voltage, uh, voltage meter, you will measure the noise over this entire uh, band. And your signal actually, even if uh, on the uh, spectrum analyzer the uh, noise level is much lower than the signal, if you integrate it over the entire band uh, bandwidth, you may end up with something what is uh, comparable with, uh, with, uh, <coughs> uh, with your signal. So, solution, add the filter in front of the uh, uh, voltage meter. And this is schematic of how it looks, generator, your device, voltage meter. That's it. This is very simple. Uh, well, as I said, you can take many uh, measurements, but this is tedious, boring, uh, prone to mistakes. Uh, uh, it, you only have these uh, tools if people, if, when people had only these tools, they were usually taking only a few measurements, then it took life to this. But <coughs> this is good approximation, but what will happen if you have some, for example, very sharp resonance that we miss? You will completely miss it, you will not, not know about it. Uh, so this, this process can be easily automated and this is done in a device which is called Frequency Response Analyzer. Uh, so how such uh, device is built, we have such components, three generator, this controls uh, where is the frequency, oscillator which can be tuned, uh, of course our device, bandpass filter because you, have, you want to get rid of the noise, auto band noise, uh, signal amplitude detector and graphic device simple as that. And this is schematic of, of such device. So this is our switch generator. It generates uh, so to voltage increasing and dropping and we have our voltage control oscillator. So what, how does it affect the generator? When the voltage rises, the frequency rises. So we go up, 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 up in frequency and then voltage drops, we go back to the start. So we have if you look at the 
frequency coming out of this, we have also similar sound. Uh, then we have our device, filter, which filters out everything uh, except our signal. And this filter must be matched with, uh, with generator, because you want to cut everything uh, from your input except your signal, which is coming from the generator. So this filter also has to be tuned then amplitude detector and uh, graphing device, uh, usually it, it used to be oscilloscope. And uh, this swing generator controls horizontal axis, mm -hmm. uh, the signal from the amplitude detector controls uh, vertical axis, so uh, the higher the signal, the higher the, the beam goes, and because this uh, generator is connected to horizontal line, it goes from this, 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 like, like this. So we go from low frequency, very little signal, then we get to our band pass, high signal, high, le high level of signal from the detector, again, low level. <coughs> uh, this sounds very like spectrum analyzer, and it is. Uh, why do I mention this? Because if you are going to take a material extra uh, exam, these are uh, there are several questions about spectrum analyzer. So I want to tell you uh, about this, so you, you will not have to go uh, through this topic. Uh, what are the similarities? The measurement path is pretty much identical. Uh, you don't need the generator. Uh, To many, uh, if, if you buy uh, spectrum analyzer, you can actually add uh, switch generator. This is the voltage controlled uh, generator, and this is not very expensive. For example, Rigol, uh, in Rigol, you can add uh, tracking generator for like a couple of 300 bucks. Compared to the cost of the uh, spectrum analyzer, it's pretty much nothing. <coughs> so, this is how it looks. This, this grayish, barely visible, this is the part which we can remove from the frequency response analyzer and the uh, spectrum analyzer. Okay, any, any questions about this? So we may have input to the device under test? Uh, anything. Okay. So th this, can be a, this can be a gen generator. The difference between spectrum analyzer and uh, frequency response analyzer is that you don't feed devi this device with energy. So this can be your radio, this can be a <coughs> generator, this can be anything, whatever. You don't feed it anything. Well, you just take the output. I guess the term response analyzer means it's responding to something you're generating. Yes. Uh, res in response analyzer, as opposed to a frequency analyzer, which just measures whatever frequency is coming in. Yes, from the here you provide the input to the device, and this device can be completely passive, it doesn't have to generate anything. Here, you just look at the output, whatever the output is. If this is passive device, it will be noise. If this is active device, for example, you can look at, uh, your, <coughs> uh, at your transmitter if you're not transmitting uh, spurious signals. Then you, co you connect uh, to spectrum analyzer and you look how it looks, uh, how, how, how it looks what you, what you send to the antenna. If your uh, transmitter is okay, it, would, it will look something like this. If you have spurious signals, you would have some spikes here. So that's the difference. More questions? It's showtime. <laughs> so let me connect the device. This is the board with leads. And let me show you what I have here. This is small device, I got it on Kickstarter, this is called Red Pitaya, and this is actually software defined uh, anything. It has FPGA here, which takes care of processing and generating signals. There are two 
uh, ARM processors in this uh, in this FPGA. Uh, there are two digital to analog converters which provide signals to uh, analog to digital converters which measure the input, actually sample the input, and uh, you can connect it to the network. Here I have wireless uh, interface. So first let me connect to the network. Okay, it's connected. Great. And by the way, you, you can use, uh, I'm using a laptop, but, but you can also use a tablet with uh, this device. You just, uh, you, just, you can connect anything that has uh, Wi-Fi connectivity and uh, web browser. What is that? Is that a, is that a micro design, right, driving the A to D or D to A? Yes. Say? So you have FPGA which generates uh, signal sends to uh, DAC. You have analog signal on the, on the output, and you have ADC. Uh, so you get an FPGA engine there generating the signal you said, synthesizing the frequency. You yes. Get. Yes. Okay. And these are the applications that I have. Uh, by the way, don't get too excited about it. It's uh, I. Liked it at the beginning, right now I consider it as an educational toy. For many reasons, but... Okay, it's worth the device, but uh, for serious work, you should get something else. Something that costs more than $10,000. Uh, not necessarily. Rigol should be fine, but something that costs less than, uh, more than 500 bucks. Who is this Rigol? I just keep hearing this show up. It's it seems a to be the new kid on the block or something. Chinese is company. this the new Asus or something? Uh, th th this is Chinese manufacturer. It's a Chinese manufacturer? Yes, uh, but the, they are not... Uh, your they make your everyday Chinese manufacturer. They actually they are all OEM for, I think, uh, Agilent. Agilent? Uh, the, for one of the big players. So the uh, which got changed is now Keys Tech. Yeah, but Keys Tech. Again? I, yeah, they got split again. You know, <laughs> as equity I, I, traders I, I, have to buy and sell companies every other I, week. I, I don't remember so which one. The they are building uh, devices for one of the big uh, big players. So well, I, sh I was at a tech school the other day and saw this Rigol instrument. I said, where do these guys come from? You know? uh, <laughs> these devices are worth the money. They are? Okay. They, they are. Because uh, I remember Enritsu's blowing out on me. And <laughs> <laughs> spectrum analyzers. And <laughs> okay, so this is what uh, we have. This is... Uh, first I have to calibrate it, so what I did... I connected uh, the input and output with a barrel, and you can see that this is way below zero because I have attenuator here. If I connect uh, the output from this uh, analyzer directly to the input of the uh, amplifier, it will be way overblown. So I have to attenuate it. So let's bring the signal to zero. How much attenuation are you using? Uh, 30. 30 dB. Okay. So it's calibrated nicely at zero. And let me connect. And that's the output of the FPGA that you uh, this generating is some kind of. This is the noise that uh, the AC, ADC picks up. Oh. And this is uh, quantization noise, all kinds of noise. And actually the noise that the ADC picks up is pretty big. This is one of the 
my complaints about uh, the device that uh, the noise that it picks up is very good. Okay, power up. Then it's 20 dB. What the hell? Oops, I connected it in reverse. But I did it on purpose. So what I'm measuring here is what is called in datasheet reverse isolation. This is isolation that uh, the amplifier gives you from the output to the input. If you apply the signal to the output, this is how much it will be attenuated uh, at the input. And according to the datasheet, it's 23 dB typical. Uh, we have uh, around 20, 20 ish a little bit before, below 30, so should be with this better. So, take two, let me reverse it. You mean unreverse it? Unreverse it. Reverse the reversal. Reverse the reverse. So right now we have completely different situation. Uh, don't look at this, this is end of the band, so it, it, it shows many different things here, but here you see very nicely 20 dB. Let's look at the data sheet. what we should get. Small signal gain uh, measured at 2 gigahertz, well I, I'm not measuring at 2 gigahertz, but minimum is 19 dB, typical is 20. We have very nice 20 dB gain. So what's the uh, high end frequency of that chart? Uh, for the device it's 6 gigahertz, for this board this is FR4 so I don't expect it to go up to 6 gigahertz, but uh, should be usable up to, I don't know, 500 megahertz, 1 gigahertz, I don't know, I, I, have, I have no way to measure it. Now that signal you were putting through it, that's, that's doing a frequency uh, scan from what frequency to what? What's from the top? 0 to What's the 60, top frequency? 60 megahertz. 6 megahertz? 60. 60. Yeah, 60. 60. So that's zero at the bottom, all the way to the top yeah, is so this 60. Is, this is zero here, 60 is here. 60, so Easy. pretty flat all the way across <laughs> yeah. in frequency. Well, from the device which is spec'd up to 6 gigahertz, I would expect to be flat. Yeah. And what kind of power is that? Uh, 20 dB. Oh. And uh, so you put zero uh, at the input, you should get 20 dB. Yeah. So what else I could uh, do with this device? Uh, well, first of all, I don't have enough time. Uh, second, I have uh, the equi equipment that I have is insufficient to, for this uh, for this measurement. But uh, what I guess I could do? Noise figure. You need uh, a noise source. Yeah, you need a noise source. You right? have a noise source. Don't you? Uh, yeah, but you need <laughs> controlled noise source. <laughs> And actually, controlled noise source can be very uh, expensive if you look at, uh, I'm not talking about new. Look at eBay. Uh, the cheapest one, decent, I found was uh, around uh, $100, uh, semi-calibrated. If you look at brand names, you, you go into thousands. Yeah. Uh, what else can we measure? Reflection coefficient, so how well it's matched, uh, the output, the input, uh, compression point. Uh, this is very important. This tells you how much power you can put at the input before uh, it's, it, you start to get distortions. Oh, but by the way, let me show you one more experiment. Let, let me show you why I need this attenuator. So I'm remo removing the attenuator. Connect directly. Okay. 
this is what you get if you overtype the amplifier. <laughs> yeah, not pretty. Uh, it's actually ugly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <coughs> so one last thing that I want to tell you: Why should you care about this uh, uh, reverse uh, isolation? Uh, most of the time, you don't. But there, there may be situations when you do, and uh, I can imagine two. Phasing circuits. Uh, yeah, but uh, something what you can uh, you can find in. But well, if you experiment with, yeah, this is one, and uh, and another scenarios that uh, I came up with uh, that you can encounter in your uh, work as. Uh, engineer is two. You have, for example, one, one situation. You have uh, a switching generator, uh, very stable amplitude controlled, and you use resistive divider. One part of the signal you, you send to the out to this amplifier. Second part goes to somewhere else. But you need to have stable uh, amplitude. You rely on this. And accidentally, you forgot to terminate the output of this amplifier. What happens? All the power gets reflected. So you have 20 dB amplification on the way up, reflects 20 dB attenuation on the way back. You end up, um, well, you have oscillator, so you don't have to oscillate. But what happens? You have pretty much identical signal uh, coming back with random phase, and this signal interferes with the signal from your generator. Right. And when you sweep, uh, this, this phase difference changes, and you get amplitude sweep from zero to whatever. And you have no idea what is happening. So you have to take in, into this into account. So is that, does that one that being stochastic noise, or is it No, 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 it's, it's just phase difference. Because uh, when you go through the amplifier and back, the sh the, it, you have delay. And this translates into phase difference uh, when you change the frequency. Uh, another situation is that you have very stable generator, one frequency. Again, uh, signal splitter, uh, your uh, amplifier antenna matched, so you don't have any, uh, any, any reflection. And you rely on the stability of the signal, on the cleanness of the signal. And everything is matched, everything works perfectly, but you see that you get junk in the signal. What is going on? Well, you discover that you pointed the uh, antenna at the window, and you happen to have a transmitter outside. So the signal, signal from the uh, antenna works both ways. It transmits and receives. So you transmit your signal, but you receive the signal from the, from the transmitter outside. This signal gets to the amplifier, to your uh, device, and adds to the signal from the generator, and you get junk. Uh, okay, that's it.